Um, so thank you everyone for uh, coming tonight. What we're going to be doing is really taking you through uh, where we've got to with Highgate Library. Obviously uh, many if not most of you are aware of uh, the discussions that have happened uh, in recent months, the recent cabinet decision uh, and are obviously keen to know what that means for the future of the library. Uh, and so the point of tonight is to essentially say how we've got to where we are now uh, to give you a bit of uh, thinking about uh, what the current vision is for our libraries uh, and for Highgate Library in particular uh, and then open up for the opportunity for a bit of a Q&A and for people to make uh, their points not only Can about... Can you give us a time table of, of what time we're going to have tonight and in particular what time people here are going to have? Yep, I was, I was about to come okay. to that. I, I, I was about to come to that. So I recognise people have questions. I ask that you give me the opportunity just to finish and then if I haven't answered your questions then you ask me after that. Can so, I, can I say, could you I was just I was, I was just about to do that too. I've got a whole slide on it. Um, so just moving to that, my name's uh, Jason Arthur. I'm one of the uh, Crouch End uh, councillors. I'm also the cabinet member for finance and health. But actually, uh, tonight I'm chairing this as a Crouch End uh, councillor because unfortunately uh, neither the leader nor the cabinet member for libraries was able to make it tonight. Um, we also why not? We also have. We also have, uh, it's not outrageous, uh, the cabinet member for libraries, mother has died recently, which is why she's unable to come, and the uh, leader has had a meeting booked in for tonight for a number of months, which she can't get out of. I'm hoping I'll be able to substitute uh, well enough for you. We'll also have uh, tonight Andy Briggs, who's the uh, assistant director for customer services and libraries, who's essentially uh, the director responsible for our libraries. Then we've got Judith Walker, uh, who's the head of libraries and customer services, and Vicky Clark, who's the AD for economic development uh, and growth. So they'll be able to, as I say, take us through uh, these four key bullet points, um, these core objectives for tonight. So one is just to paint a picture about the national and the local context for libraries. Uh, secondly, to uh, share some of the thoughts that uh, officers and councillors are having about the future vision of the library service to so obviously get your view on what the library service needs to be now and in the future, what the opportunities are, what the risks are, uh, and then also to ensure that you've got the background to the current proposal uh, for the library. What arrangements are being made to take down what people say and actually check with them that it's being correctly taken down? Yep, so we've got officers who will be taking a note of all questions and comments. We'll make sure that if people are wanting to see the uh, outcome of that, then that happens. I see that there's also a, a camera there, so I'm sure that there'll be something online probably as well so that people can listen to the questions and comments. Sorry, just, yes, is there anybody here from uh, Jackson's Lane this evening to explain their position? No, and that, that was a conscious decision uh, uh, not for it to be driven by Jackson's Lane. So far, the conversation has been, I think, very focused on the needs of Jackson's Lane, the fact that they were looking to uh, get funding from the Arts Council, uh, and so the in principal decision that was taken by Cabinet was in part to support their progress with that. But putting that to one side, it's really important that Jackson's Lane aren't the ones who are dominating the conversation. And so for this, what we wanted to do was make the focus really about the future and the vision of the library service, in which case it's appropriate for council officers to be the ones sharing where we are now, yes, but rather I mean, than Jackson's Lane. Conversation. I mean, how long are we going to have and how long are you going to have? Yeah, so uh, I, I'll be really clear. So I don't think the presentation is going to be more than about 15, 20 minutes. So we have to, I think, leave by nine, just so that the uh, caretaker for the school can get out uh, at the appropriate time. But that should leave us a healthy chunk of time for people to ask questions, to make their points, to make sure that they're their voices are heard. So before I hand over to Andy, are there any other questions about how things are going to work tonight? Just a little bit. Yeah. None of that, you said actually people will be listened to. Yeah, I, I think I did say that in terms of making sure people's voices are heard. That is, that's that's we're not quite so no effect. one's taking notes from your side. No one took notes at the last two meetings that I went to or at the AGM that we, we both met. You can't managed. hear the so questions. So where are the note takers? Okay, uh, so, the, so, the, so there was a question about whether there are, uh, is anyone taking notes for tonight? There are officers who are 
taking where, notes. There's one. Sitting at the back, we're moving. Yep. Yeah, so there was one lady sitting at the back, uh, another lady, another officer, and a gentleman. They were sitting at the back. They are taking notes. If you'd prefer to see them at the front, so you can uh, confirm that they're taking notes, and uh, <coughs> that will happen. In answer to your question about um, are we listening? Absolutely, and I think as uh, uh, Andy is going to outline, I think one of the misconceptions that uh, exists at the moment is that a decision has been taken on oh, Highgate oh, Library. Oh, 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 oh. Um, That's a misconception, is it? It absolutely is, and if, I think if you give uh, officers and I the opportunity to talk you through it, we'll say what decision has been taken and what decision needs to come back to Cabinet before any well, final decision. decision. Yeah. I was there. Is there going to be, are there going to be minutes of this meeting and are they going to be circulated to the attendance of this meeting? Yeah, uh, so, yes. uh, that's a good, so yes we are, no, yeah, no, I'm, I'm about to answer it. So we are taking notes of all the questions and answers that come. I think, we, I think it's right to say that if people want them to be circulated, they should be. So I'll look to officers to make sure that they are, at the end of the meeting, able to capture people's details. He's going to walk us through this. Again, just to ask for a bit of patience, it'll take about... 10 to 15 minutes, uh, please, if you have the opportunity to, record the questions that you have. After that, I'll step back in and then I'll chair it and make sure that people get enough time to give their viewpoint and ask the questions that they have. Thank you. Who are you? So I, I introduced that earlier, so this is Andy Briggs. Andy Briggs He's I'm the AD. The Assistant Director for Customer Services and Libraries. Can you all hear me at the back? Yeah, good, good. Uh, and my colleague, uh, Judith, will also play a part in this presentation as well. So I'm just gonna take us through the front end, which is about the national context and local context. It's important we hear this. And then Judith will take us more into the vision. Tonight is about hearing about a vision for a Highgate library of the future. Uh, and Judith will take us into more yeah, detail. The so, there continues to be a national trend of library closures, um, volunteer-led libraries and alternative delivery models. It's safe to say there are no such proposals here of this kind in Harangay. The Arts Council now oversees and provides grant funding and opportunities for libraries. It's fair to say that uh, nationally, given austerity that is very competitive, so we need, to, we need to be innovative and come up with ideas and approaches to deliver better library services. The reduction in the local government um, budgets going uh, over the last 10 years is severe, we all know that. We've had 40% cuts in Haringey, which constitutes about 160 million pounds worth of savings and we've protected the library service. I think it's really important <laughs> to state that uh, at this point. So, the Libraries Task Force, uh, that was commissioned by the uh, Department of Culture, Media and Sport, has produced the library's delivery uh, ambition for libraries in England. It focuses on seven key outcomes, which are listed there. So, culture, culture and creativity and enrichment, uh, increasing reading and literacy, clearly very important for the library service, improving digital access, uh, and there will be, need to be a lot more of that going forward given the changing trends, helping everyone achieve their full potential, uh, and ha uh, ensuring that it's healthier and happy lives going forward, and using libraries for that in terms of greater prosperity, and building stronger and more resilient communities. We want libraries to be more resilient and, and better equipped to weather the challenges going forward. Uh, the budget constraints that there is locally coming down nationally is not going away, so we need to ensure that we are fit for purpose for that. Yeah, but let's be clear, you're going to <laughs> Sir, can I, can, can I ask, uh, uh, just again, just out of respect for the speakers, that they're given the opportunity the without... <laughs> well, well then, sir, if, if, if you aren't prepared quiet, to be quiet, then I will ask officers to stop speaking and you will ruin it for everyone. So I'm going to ask again in the final time, Please withhold your comments until after the presentation is done. Thank you. Um, in June 2016, the Society of Chief Librarians uh, included culture um, as part of the universal offer, the one that I've just gone through. Uh, and it sits alongside reading, information, digital, health and learning. The culture offer recognises public libraries as welcoming places 
Uh, I don't really need to read this word, word no, no, no. here tonight because Please. you know the importance of a library service and what it does for the community, whether that be young or old. <clears throat> so, uh, in terms of a bit more national context and uh, looking at Jackson's Lane, there was an independent social impact study conducted uh, for Jackson's Lane. Uh, and, and some of the strongest impact points there were around increased confidence uh, and increased well-being, uh, strengthening social bonds, raising aspirations, <coughs> and gaining creative skills. This is also very closely aligned to the Council's uh, corporate priorities, uh, as we've listed here. So in terms of the Haringey context, um, and some of this I've already stated, but Haringey remains committed to its library service going forward. Uh, we're seeking to create more resilient libraries and prepare for the challenges of the future, um, even in budget constraints. We have invested over £5 million in libraries during the difficult period. That is evident. And we are, and we are investing more, and we are investing more over coming years in the region of about another two million into our library. So we know Hornsey is going to see a uh, further refurb, and we are seeking some some smaller investments into our branch libraries. So again, I'm just re-emphasising we remain committed to our library service. <clears throat> we do retain some of the longest opening hours in London where others have reduced. There's a commitment to that, uh, that, that has continued, particularly our branch libraries. Uh, you only need to look in comparison to our, our, um, our neighbouring boroughs. We are continuing to recruit, that's an important part. Uh, a lot of the comments I get are about, we've got a really good workforce, we've got really good staff. Uh, we continue to invest in our staff and we are recruiting. And we're continuing to explore opportunities to take the service forward, uh, such as the one we're here to talk about tonight. And we're working with the libraries, uh, communities to strengthen the role that libraries play in the community. So I'm going to hand over to uh, Judith now, who's going to take us through uh, the rest of the presentation. We're about halfway through, so as we said, it's not, it's not a long presentation.